haven't really found that to be significantly true. I don't know, have you? No, it's usually a Yeah. yeah and the, you buy very cheap <coughs> cheap knife with cheap stainless, you're not going to need sharpening. When they sell you these Ginsu knives, they say never need sharpening. Every knife needs sharpening. But they're saying the metal is so hard. Once it gets dull, you haven't got a chance in your lifetime to resharpen it. So, uh, naturally, uh, carbon will rust if you leave it out. Here's a trick that I found out. Everybody here has guns, so you're probably familiar with super glue. I just take some, kiss the knife blade with some double or four out steel wool, <coughs> and I blew the uh, blade. <coughs> I do the same thing with my axes. It doesn't make it rust proof, it makes it rust resistant. Um, what you're looking for, uh, like I said, my preference is uh, carbon. It's kind of hard to find. Uh, carbon blades unless you go to a custom knife maker, but they're out there. Um, the tang of the knife, um, these are more knives, I sell them and they're great for playing around, around like this, um, but they're only a third tang, so if you cut them off, that's where it ends. Great knife for here. But if you go on our main winter trip or something, I wouldn't take this knife. Because if you start prying on it, it, it could. <coughs> one of our instructors, Glenn, he beats on these mercilessly, and they don't break. I mean, they can, but they're great knives. They cost 14, 15 bucks. Before I got into survival, I uh, bought this knife. It was really cool. I thought this is a cool looking knife. Got a stainless blade, and they chromed it. You know how hard that is. <laughs> but the reason I really bought it is because it's a survival knife, and in this handle, you have compass, and you have fishing, and you have a needle. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Where do you think the blade stops? Right. Right about here. <laughs> yeah. So just to show you, you know, it, it's junk. So, uh, um. If you're doing folding lives, and I don't have to tell you this, but you need them, the blade to lock. If you don't have a locking blade, this is one of my students. I told him that, and he said he's still uh, in our race for his re-signing up. Yeah. I gave him this. And I told him, I said, I'll loan you one of my knives, don't use it. And, you know, I mean, he was an adult, you know, so he said, no, I'm careful. I know I've been using knives all my life. Two days later, he came. He said, where's the med kit? And I said, uh, what happened? He goes, my knife closed. He said, he's, where is it? He's in garbage. He said, you mind if I take it to show people? Usually, uh, if you use these and they do close, they're not going to cut your finger off. They stop at the bone. Yeah. So you don't have to worry. It doesn't freeze. I'd rather have it all the way off than just to stop at the bone. What I tell people, if your grandfather gave you the knife and it's a family heirloom, it belongs behind a glass case someplace nice. If it's not a family heirloom, throw it away, don't give it to nobody. It's got to have a lock and blade. Now, uh, I'm sure you guys know this. the straight edges and serrated. Straight, you can sharpen them easier and all that. Uh, serrateds are good at car. Well, first, straight blade, if it's sharp, carves meat, carves rope, and carves wood grain. Serrated carves meat, carves rope, is lousy at carving wood. When you're in the woods, what are you going to be carving? Wood. Now, I saw you pull this knife out. Your small one? Uh, uh, that was up here? I'm not a big fan of serrated. However, if you might want to have change this into a serrated blade. The only reason is, you're going to have your main knife on you. When, if dogs come up or something, you might want a serrated blade here. I mean, I'm a dog lover, I love dogs, but if you're in a situation where dogs are coming at you, the way you protect yourself is you put your arm out and the dogs will lunge and bite at the first thing in front of them. So the dogs are going to come up, they're going to bite your arm, and you have your knife and you just shh, you gut them. It's terrible, but if you're in that situation, you got to do something. So a serrated up here might not be bad. 
other than that, I don't like screwing the paint is sharpened. Um, angles. Yeah. Very general. Do you know what angle you're at? You probably don't. <laughs> <laughs> Not the angle, but mine's complex. So. Okay. I, I like flat ones just because they're easy to sharpen the woods. But do you know what angle your knives are at? No, I don't. I, you, most people don't. Um, typically what you want, if you have a 15 degree angle, that would be for a fillet knife. reason is, extremely sharp, but there's not a lot of metal supporting that. So if you hit something hard like a piece of wood, it's going to it's going to bend right over. A pocket knife like we all have, 20 degrees, 18 if you want it really sharp but not as durable, 22, 23 if you want it more durable but not quite as sharp. Or if you have a big sheath knife, we, we saw one at the school, and a big knife that's going to be hacking into trees. You want something like 25 degrees, and then you get your axes and hatchets and all that. The reason most knife sharpeners, you take it and you pass your knife two, three, or four times, it won't sharpen your knife, is because this happens here. This gold is the knife sharpener you're trying. This is the knife you're trying to put in there. Your knife does not fit that specific thing. So you have to grind out off all this metal before your knife even fits in there to start sharpening. That's why if you, there's a couple ways to sharpen, and we'll talk about both of them. But if you're going to buy a knife sharpener, you buy it and get one you like and stick with that one. And only use that one on your knife. So you don't have to be playing around with this. The first time you sharpen a knife, you have to match your knife to the sharpener. It might take you 15, 20 minutes to do that. After that, it should take you less than a minute to, to sharpen your knife. Okay? Um, so I'm going to blow it through this because I don't want to waste you guys' time. I've never found knife sharpeners like this to work very well. They'll improve your knife. They're not going to get it when I consider sharp. If you have one of these or something like it that work, let me know because I'll become a dealer for it. <laughs> because if it works, I'd love to know. But. Okay. Hmm? Mm -hmm. Okay. Sharpening a knife. Freehand. Very easy. First, let's talk about stones. General three kinds of stones. You have an oil stone. They're usually pretty inexpensive, 10, 15 bucks. They have a coarse side and a fine side. Usually the darker side is coarse, the lighter side is fine. Just like sandpaper, when you're working on wood, what do you do first? You use a rough sandpaper, then you go to the finer and finer. Same thing with a knife. You start with the coarse side. Call it oil because you put oil on here. It's not a lubricant, but it makes the metal filings float to the top. So you can just break it off, put more oil on, and it keeps the coarseness of the stone. Ceramic stones, something they call water stones, they're great for touch-up. They don't take metal off fast. They'll take you forever to get a knife sharp with this. And then you have your diamond stones. If you take in this class, only buy a knife sharpener with diamond stones or only buy diamond stones. These are inexpensive, 10, 15 bucks. They will belly out, which means they're going to do this, and you can't get a knife sharp on, on, even, on a not flat surface. You got to carry oil with you in your backpack. That oil will open up someday. You're getting oil all over your stuff. These will take off typically metal fast enough. These typically will not belly out. The holes in there are where the uh, metal filings are. Uh, to clean them, you wet them, wipe them on your pants, they're ready to go. Um, they're expensive, 39 bucks for this. Two-sided, coarse and, uh, coarse and fine, but definitely they're, they're ready to go. Now somebody said at a class, he goes, well, 39 bucks. I saw it at Walmart for 18. You can. I did some research. I'm going to get my terminology wrong here, but I want you to get the idea. The, the one for Walmart has 18 
pieces of diamond per square whatever. This has 67. So there's a lot more diamond in this. Yeah, you can get a cheaper one, but if you're going to get one, you want to do this. Sharpen the knife very simply. This, this knife, not a fillet knife, probably 20 degree angle. All you do, oil on here, hold it flat, hold it at 20 degrees, and rub it across. And then you do the same thing back, 20 degrees. And you do that about 50, 60 times. That's easy. Is that 20 degrees? Or is it 18? <laughs> Where's it 21? You know. That's 21. Sure, sure it's not 22. <laughs> That's the problem. Worst thing you can do is do 20, 20, 20, 18, 23, 22. Your edge is going to be rounded. You have to have some way to have a consistent angle. Now, you can get good at this. It's called freehand sharpening. Roughly, it'll take you about a year. And you'll probably ruin about three lives. You've been that path I take it. <laughs> Am I close on the time? Yes. I yes, I three hands. Three hands and hard. Hard. Yeah, it really is. And when you're done, you'll be able to get this super sharp. You won't know what the angle is, but it'll be consistent all the time, and it'll be sharp, and then all you need to carry is a stone, and you do this, and it'll be really nice. Mm -hmm. But if you want to take the time, you're going to have to get a knife sharpener. Knife sharpener is going to do a couple things for you. It's either going to keep the angle consistent of the stone, and then all you have to do is keep your knife straight up and down, or it's going to make the stone consistent angle to the blade. Um, a couple of the ones that I found are kind of nice. You must have a favorite truck right now, do you? I run the MTs. And if I run my bigger blades like quarter inch or bigger, I run the uh, work sharp. So do you have the, sharp, the DMT? Hmm? I don't have the whole setup. All I have I work on sharp one with one of those. That's it. Okay. He's good. I can feel the mm -hmm. drag. You can feel where you're hitting and where you're not. Yeah. For those that aren't quite as good as this guy here, this is a nice system from DMT. You have different detents which will put this at the different heights. This is going to determine your angle. They both have to be the same. It comes, I know two, two clicks up is going to be a 20 degree angle. I just know that. So you can go 15, you can go 20, you can vary that. It comes with all four stones. The black is extra coarse, coarse, fine, extra fine. So you have all the diamond stones. You start with the coarsest. This is kind of a no-brainer. You put your knife in here, and you lock it down. You put your stone in there. It's 20 degree angle. Now all I do. I can look at you, I can look to see if there's deer out there, and I know my angle is 20 degrees. So two things, I got diamond stones, and a consistent angle, and a way to change the angle for different knives. So this, by definition, in my opinion, is a good knife sharp. The way I do this, each side I'll do 10 strokes. How much pressure are you putting? I'm taking metal off. So I'm, I don't want to screw up this angle, that's why I'm not hard, doing hard, but you put pressure on. You're taking metal off. Ten, and then I go ten. Then I go back to the first side and do nine. Nine, eight, eight, seven, all the way to one and one. When I'm one and one, I pop the stone out. Go to the next stone. Ten, ten, nine, nine, eight, eight. Go to the red one. 10, go all the way down. Then go down to the green one. After the green one, I am not done. The most important thing is to take the burr off. Whenever you sharpen a knife, you're going to have a little piece of metal that curves over there. Exactly what you're doing. Take the burr off. There's a couple. Honestly, you don't really need a tool. You can use your belt. A piece of leather, uh, the old, old West, the barber. Just take the burr off. I'm just touching it up. As you can use your belt, you can use that. I have these rods, they're called deburring rods. What you do, it's with a lighter touch, but it's kind of wiping. And you're saying, well, 
how, what angle you use it, it doesn't really matter. You're not using that much pressure. And that's going to take the burr off. When people sharpen their knives here, they'll use what, any sharpener, any time you sharpen it, freehand, you got to take the burr off. They'll sharpen, they'll say, Tom, I did everything you said, my knife's not sharp. Let me see, I take it, I take the deep burring rod. Oh, I forgot that. And then it'll, so you need that. I just got a new deep burring rod, and I'll have to show you guys. It's brand new. It's a diamond deep burring rod. I'll have to pull one out. You can just use this one for now. But uh, you can use quartz through inside of a high pressure sodium. They have a nice quartz tube in there. It breaks though. This is nice. It's, it's durable. This is one type. I'm going to leave these out so you can check it out to see what you like. The next one I find works pretty well is the Spyderco. Funny thing with Spyderco, I said these don't take metal off good, work fast, and they're right, so they came out with some diamond ones. The way this works. You put these safety rods in, in case you miss, you want to cut off your hand, I guess. They're triangular. You put these in, and you put the triangular part towards your blade first. Now, all you have to do is keep your knife straight up and down. And drag it through there. It's important your knife straight up and down, because if you start rocking it, your angles change it. But most people, you know, I said, is this a 21 degree angle? You couldn't tell me. Is this straight up and down? You can probably tell that's pretty much straight up and down. It's easier. So you just go down. You have to do this about 40 times. Straight down. Then once you do about 40, you rotate these to the flat side. Basically by doing that, you're spreading out the pressure so it's like easing up the pressure a little bit. And you do about 40 of these. Then you go to the dark stones, pointy side, flat side, the white stones, pointy side, flat side. Are you done? Why?